Welcome to The Conversation. My name is Paul Plett, and joining me today are Sonny Enkin Lewis, Oni Babajide, and Hannah Muhajirin. Welcome here, guys. So today we are going to have a conversation about climate. But before we dive in, uh, maybe I could just hear a little bit about each of you guys. Um, do you mind kind of introducing yourselves? Um, so I'm a university student right now. I'm at the University of Winnipeg studying sociology. And for the last around two years of my life, I've been involved in climate organizing. I was in a group called Manitoba Youth for Climate Action, um, which was our version of the Fridays for the Future movement. So we planned um, school strikes, um, as well as working with Idle No More to plan a round dance. Um, and now I'm sort of bridging my Judaism with my climate action um, and working to start what's called the Dayenu Circle, um, which is a Jewish call to climate action. So, uh, My name is Onibabajidi David, uh, currently a master's student, second year, to be precise, at the Natural Resource uh, Institute uh, at the University of Manitoba. I've been so involved in uh, community development, sustainability management, as well as how uh, all of this relates into uh, climate change and the achievement of uh, sustainable development goals uh, nationally as well as uh, globally. My name is Hannah Mohadrin. I'm originally from uh, Saskatoon, but I've lived in Winnipeg for about the past five years or so. Um, I moved here to do a master's in natural resource management at the, the Natural Resources Institute, um, same as Babaji. And um, I guess I got involved um, with the Manitoba Energy Justice Coalition soon after moving here. Oh, and I guess I should mention as well as MEJC, I was also involved with the Our Time movement, um, which was active a couple years ago during the federal election. Um, and that was a national movement of young people across Canada pushing for a Green New Deal. Yeah, I've also consistently been involved uh, with MEJC through the, for the past four or five years. And then in my, I guess my kind of other life and, and work, um, my master's research looked at uh, meanings and values around um, indigenous traditional food systems. And I'm also part of the Fireweed Food Collective. So I'm also really interested in um, uh, sustainable food systems, local food systems, which of course interacts with um, and is part of climate solutions as well. So we've got a wealth of, of experience and knowledge here. Um, that's great. This, this uh, conversation is really just going to touch the surface. But I do have a couple topics that I want to kind of touch on. I guess first... When you hear the words climate change, what do you think about? Anytime I hear the word climate change, of course, a lot of things run through my mind. But specifically now, it's uh, thinking about a shift or perhaps you might want to say a deviation from normal in terms of climatic conditions. And of course, you would want to have over a period of time. So definitely, if you want to discuss climate change, you definitely have to talk about weather and different uh, climatic uh, conditions. Although we can't actually uh, see it, it isn't visual, but we can feel it. And that is saying that, what can we observe that has changed? So all of these effects and uh, impacts of different changes that has to do with weather, even the way things are happening around in terms of the elements of nature, the natural infrastructure around us, how we use them, how it has changed over time. Uh, yeah, just building off of, of, of what Oni said, I think of, um, I think one big like development for me that's taken place in how I think about climate change over the last few years has been um, connecting it to issues of um, justice like more broadly. A big thing that's really shifted my uh, understanding and I think concern about climate change has been um, deepening my understanding of how climate change is connected to um, systems of like uh, of, of, of other forms of, of oppression. Um, so that like our exploitation 
the earth and, and the planet's resources is connected to exploitation of of people so like it's connected to capitalism it's connected to colonialism um it's connected to um like systemic racism and sexism and um and that we find that like these systems that are driving us towards uh climate change and 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 causing the unsustainable like extraction and burning of fossil fuels is also unsustainable for people and so I think that that's like a really important that's definitely like changed how I think about climate change and made it a lot more immediate to me because I think especially in in Manitoba like um especially if you are like living a more like comfortable life which I know like I definitely am I feel um uh protected from those those impacts of climate change but it's easy to think this is far off in the future it's not happening yet um it's not immediate and even then like it's not going to impact me so much but I think connecting it to these other forms of oppression um and realizing how these problems are interconnected but then also the solutions are interconnected so it's been exciting to see those connections being made in the climate movement and I'm hoping that that will continue uh, uh, as like a, a collective shift in our understanding. That's interesting. And it's a perfect segue as well. I mean, my next question is, is wanted to talk a little bit about the effects of climate change globally. So what climate change does, um, one of the effects of climate change is worsening of natural disasters. So we'll see an increase in wildfires and we already have. Um, if you remember the Amazon wildfires, those were worsened by climate change. Um, the ones in Australia worsened by climate change. Um, we'll see an increase and uh, an increase in severity of hurricanes across the world. Um, we'll see an increase of flooding. Yeah, all the natural disasters uh, will become more frequent and more intense. Um, what's important to know about how climate change impacts globally is that it doesn't impact everyone the same way. Um, there's what we call the global south, and that's who is most affected by climate change. Um, poorer countries are much more affected by climate change um, as they don't have the resources. Climate change is um, intersectional, so it impacts every single other issue um, in the world. Um, people who are farmers and who rely on the land are much more likely to feel the impacts of climate change. Um, another impact is health, um, the rising levels of pollution um, can have impacts on people with um, other lung issues and can cause issues like asthma. Mm -hmm. And as parts of the world become unlivable due to high, higher temperatures um, and natural disasters and flooding, um, there'll be people, and there already are people, who um, have to move from their homes. And um, the refu climate refugees, um, they need a place to stay. So that's a global impact, um, as well as political turmoil. So governments will have a choice. Um, they'll either choose to kind of work together or turn against each other. Some political effects, economic effects, and even livelihood and exploitation of uh, resources. So you want to talk about ownership, control, you know, access, and also property rights. So how do we determine all of this uh, in terms of uh, how far we have uh, felt uh, climate change uh, you know, up to this moment. You know, the other time when I said climate change is value change. And uh, looking at the USA over the past four years ago, you would see that, of course, there was a president, you know, that took the state out of a climate, you know, Paris climate change oh. agreement, right? Yeah. And there is a president that brought it in. Now, that is value. What does, you know, these two presidents, what do they actually value? Yeah. And, you know, Anna mentioned capitalism, socialism. What the two, the two, wow. these are two personalities. What do they actually value? And that also brings in leadership, the impact that leadership has on uh, climate change and how we respond to climate change. Yeah. But maybe we could talk a little bit locally. I mean, we're all based in, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Canada, uh, in one of the coldest places in the world right now. 
Um, and I would wonder if we could talk a little bit about some of the impacts of climate change locally here at, at our level. I guess, uh, first of all, I'll just say that um, if people are interested in, in, in uh, reading a lot of like in-depth research about the local impacts of climate change in Manitoba, um, I would encourage people to check out the, the Prairie Climate Center um, associated, I think they're associated with the University of Winnipeg. Um, that they do a lot of great research um, around this. Um, and so I guess like just based on, on what uh, I know about the lo local impacts, um, I think that uh, we're going to see, um, as Sunny mentioned, like more increase in extreme weather events, extreme hot and extreme cold. Those shifts are going to have repercussions in terms of um, increased uh, vulnerability to flooding and extreme flooding events, um, which we've already seen like a little bit um, increased likelihood of drought, which is of course going to impact um, farmers and our food systems, that those who make their living like directly from the land are, are like farmers and like um, indigenous harvesters are seeing the effects um, like already. And for the rest of us, it can sometimes feel like we're a little bit insulated from that, that those types of things are going to have um, repercussions that can impact us in like complex, systematic ways. So like, for example, if we're seeing more extreme weather events, then that's going to mean like more money spent by our government on responding to those events, um, which in turn under the kind of I don't know a approach of our like of our of our current government, there's a real emphasis on like like scarcity of money, and you know a lot of spending here means that uh, we don't have money that we have to like cut these services over here, which I don't necessarily like agree with that approach, but I could see how yeah that these large scale impacts are potentially then going to justify cuts in other important government funding to other impor important life giving services and then I guess the other thing that um that I want to like to point out maybe is just like how the impacts not just of climate change but of just like um fossil fuel development and um the, our approach to the land and um, the environment, how it impacts us like right now or people um, that we live alongside. So uh, a couple examples are just um, like the impact uh, on like pipeline development um, and how that represents, that impacts like people's land, farmer's land. Um, risking uh, spills and an increase in spills. It also impacts um, indigenous communities and threatens like indig indigenous jurisdictions when we've seen like lots of cases of, of fossil fuel in infrastructure being built without um, indigenous consent. Or if there is indigenous consent, um, I mean, it's a very complicated issue, but it's, I think, worth pointing out that like, that indigenous consent is sometimes can't be understood as like freely given when you've con created these conditions of like um, poverty through colonialism and then people see like the only option out is um, giving consent to these big infrastructure projects. So yeah, so I guess I, I that's all to say that I think we are there we are starting to see some of those like weather impacts right now and we're going to see more of them but we also right now see these impacts that are just like from this capitalist colonial system that is driving climate change as well as a, as a ton of other negative impacts on people. I think what we want to do we all want to pivot to maybe something that's that's tangible something that people can actually do that's a lot of news about the global situation and the local situation in terms of the impacts of climate change. But I think that people here in Manitoba and around the world would love to know what can they do, what should they do? First, I would say people need to identify the right values. You know, people need to build in a new value system. What people value needs to change because it's an adaptive process. It's not a magic. 
you know so definitely we cannot change climate change today but again we need to build on uh, what people are doing give the right information eliminate all parafiction ensure you confirm uh, you know research on any information you have about you know climate change or any kind of technological advancement uh, so as to prevent uh, the misconception i think uh, those are uh, very key in terms of uh, building on uh, a new society that helps to uh, you know encourage good resource use that values justice that values temperance that values wisdom and also values courage i think it's important not only that we try to mitigate the risks of climate change so we can do that by putting pressure on the government um, by phoning our, our elected officials and um, writing letters to our elected officials, um, asking them to prioritize climate action. Yeah, we can make changes to how we live, but it's important to um, recognize that, that, that not everyone has the ability to make changes to their lifestyle. In addition to trying to mitigate the risks of climate change, we also need to learn how to adapt. And I think what, um, to build off again what Oni was saying, I think we need to build a culture of care um, and be able to care for each other and care for the earth. Um, and that means valuing the earth and valuing each other. So you can do that by um, donating to um, causes that you support, by donating to food shelters, by even just uh, giving support to friends and family is really important because what, if we start to care for each other and, and look at um, community and look at a global community um, supporting each other, then uh, when climate change worsens, we'll be able to get through it a lot easier than if we continue this um, sort of hyper-individualized society that we currently have. Yeah, um, I really love those ideas of like a shift in, in value and, and building a culture of care. Um, to that, I would add, uh, that people uh, should really like learn how to organize and get out um, and participate in whatever kind of forms of like protest disruption and, and mass movement that uh, you're seeing and um, connect to groups that are are already involved in some forms of, of activism. Um, it doesn't it could be something like the Manitoba Energy Justice Coalition or it could be Communities Not Cuts, which works on um, uh, the province, provincial issues. It could be Winnipeg Police Cause Harm. Um, there's tons of great organizations out there. Um, there's also like uh, your like labor union, if you belong to a union. And I think that those kinds of organizations have historically been responsible for creating the some of the biggest shifts um that we've seen um you know like the civil rights movement for example um we can't rely on just voting the right people into uh power to make those changes um but we have to build uh we have to build power from below and we have to remember again how to build those mass movements and how to organize and how to to di create disruption base basically because we can't we can't continue the way that we are. And we're going to have a bunch more uh, links and resources available uh, in the de description down below if anybody wants to check out any of the stuff that, that uh, uh, Hannah, Oni, and Sunny have been talking about. Um, are there, is there anything else? We've got to kind of wrap it up here, but are there any kind of closing thoughts or, or anything that I sort of missed that you wanted to talk about or you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, bring out an important point of being responsible. You know, I was telling a friend of mine that, do, do you know that the making of a rich man is also the making of a lot of masses? In other words, even poverty is not evenly distributed, right? So that means if people, if, even if uh, life is a Pareto optimal situation. I have to grab these resources. So what do I do after grabbing it? I can be nice. I can be responsible. Oh. That builds in corporate social responsibility, more multinational social uh, entrepreneurship, you know, at the macro level, as well as the 
at the grassroots level, you know, no food wastage, you know, yeah. sharing yeah. of space, that's being responsible. So again, social responsibility is very key in climate change. Well, I think we're running about out of time. So I just want to thank all of you for joining me today. Sunny, Oni, Hannah, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate your perspective so much. Um, I think this is, for me, not the not the conclusion of a conversation, but the beginning of one. Um, and and I just, yeah, I want to thank you again um, for, for helping shed a little bit of light on this uh, issue.